let us begin with uh, two lovely ladies from Techland, Miss Matilda Schuta and Karolina Słowik. Welcome to the stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending our talk, especially today at such an early hour, so thank you twice. My name is Matilda, and I'm Karolina. We work at Techland in department purely devoted to solving problems, mostly human-related. The portfolio of the projects that we've been working at include Call of Juarez Gunslinger, Dying Light, Dying Light The Following, and few projects, uh, mobile projects by Short Break Studios. And we have 12 years of experience in HR in total. Right now, I will start sharing our, ex uh, our experiences from the onboarding process, and Carolina will join us later on to talk more about the tools that we implemented. So during the time that we've been working at Techland, we saw both amazing and really pathetic stuff. And one of the things that I will remember forever was a certain day during Dying Light. Try to imagine the situation. You're a manager or a producer working on a really bold, innovative project with tight deadlines, and you obviously lack people. So you finally decide to hire another person or two or maybe even three to make sure that the game is delivered on time and with the value that, that you uh, wanted to, to deliver. And you start the recruitment, so obviously it takes unlimited number of hours. You have countless applications, so you review them, you then meet the people, you review their tasks, give them offers, then they receive the counter offers from their current employer, then uh, you find another candidate that suits you again, unlimited number of hours, and finally you get those three lucky guys that you're willing to employ and they happily accept your offer. So straight away, you dive back into the project that was needing you so desperately because you spent so much time doing other stuff and you forget about the other things going on. And you're right uh, in, in your deadlines, in your quality and stuff. And before you realize they are on board, waiting in the HR with their papers signed, ready to start working. And this is the moment that you realize that you forgot about everything. So they don't have their chairs, they don't have their desks, their computers, software, nothing. They are just happily sitting on the front desk waiting for you. What is even worse, you cannot even grab them and talk to them because you're running from one meeting to another because you even forgot to schedule. They are coming into your calendar. So this situation really happened during Dying Light. I was the recruiter that managed to bring on board three artists who were completely forgotten by their manager. Um, one might think, how could this even happen in a company that has over 20 years of the experience on the market? We asked ourselves the same question. And so what we are going to tell you today about is how we found the roots of this problem, what we did to avoid that kind of situation, and what you can actually grab from our experience. So the takeaway from this presentation, besides funny stories about how Techland fucked up, will be four easy, effortless, and costless tools that you can create for yourself and start using them even tomorrow, and four really epic wow actions that you can add to your onboarding to make sure that your new employees will look like this. So to start with, a st step back to talk more about the methodology that we use and the approach that we decided to uh, take during solve this, solving this problem. We use an approach called design thinking. This is the approach that basically allows you to create new and uh, creative solutions and economically justified, and that's important in that kind of business, obviously, uh, for so-called wicked problem. So the wicked problem is the problem that has more than one good solution. 
So our problem was definitely weak. And two basic, there are two basic assumptions of design thinking. The first one uh, is an interdisciplinary team. So design thinking believes that uh, an interdisciplinary team can give you more input and more creative outcome than uh, a team that is looking at the problem from the same perspective. So this is quite obvious. So uh, we implemented this assumption by putting together leads from various fields in the production. So uh, lead artists, lead programmer, lead level designer, uh, lead animator, and at the same time, people from HR, IT manager. So the people who basically had anything to do with onboarding, uh, or they were lately onboarding a new person. And they were just sitting together and drawing down a map of how our onboarding process looked like. What steps did we take? And, um, well, no wonder we thought we were doing great. We didn't need any, anything to be approved or, or just made better. It was cool. At the same time, we hired an, an external agency to talk to our newcomers because design thinking as well focuses on user experience. Uh, so the agency was talking with the people that we uh, hired at nine months or early, earlier ago. And uh, they were basically asked about their uh, expectation, expectations towards recruitment and onboarding and how the reality at Techland looked like. So what they wanted and what they saw. The questions were mostly around, did they feel good? Did they, uh, did they know everything? Were they informed? Uh, so the basic stuff about each step of, um, of the onboarding. And this is how we drew the newcomer's experience map. So it showed us each step that we take during the onboarding and the feeling of the newcomer if they were happy or sad. I'm going to show you this map in a moment. It's not sexy at all. Basically, it looks, it looks, it looks sorry, um, really ridiculous, but it worked for us. I mean, it showed us where are the areas that um, people care about, but we didn't even know it. So we couldn't improve anything because we weren't aware of their expectations. So let's take a look. <clears throat> yeah, rather ridiculous, not helpful at all. Uh, in, the previous, uh, in the previous iteration of the, of the map, we even had happy and sad faces on each face so that we knew if the onboarded person was happy with the stage or not. As I said, not, uh, not well, user experience of that is not really cool. Uh, but for us, it was working due to the fact that we get to know the expectations that we didn't uh, know about before. So we were able to start fixing stuff and to start making our onboarding more friendly, professional. Various, various ideas can be applied here. <clears throat> and the first conclusion that came up from this analysis and also from observing just everyday life in the office was the fact that producers had too much to do. So they were busy while reviewing the stand-ups and the sprints with their teams. They were busy making sure all the excels put together are working good. Uh, they were busy also making sure that the team that's working on, let's say, adding more fun to slashing zombies is working towards a good direction. And at the same time, their people were coming to them saying that there are too little people in the team and they need to recruit more, that they are not motivated or they need a rise, or they are not satisfied, or maybe they are super satisfied and they want to add more to, to the project or to the team. And obviously, people are always thinking about their personal development, so they were asking about advices about the paths that they should take during their development. So that's a lot for one person. 
and we decided just simply that it's too much. Uh, the, the common thing that was going on also in the producer's role was that they had to split their personalities. So there was one personality that was more managing the game and the hard stuff connected with the production. And at the same time, there was this softer one that had to take care of their people. And no wonder that during any milestone or finishing any part of the game, always this hard one won over, over the soft one. So the people suffered. And this was not acceptable for us. So we decided to do a big change in Techland to split those two roles into producers and people managers position. As actually the names uh, suggest, uh, producer's role is connected with, uh, their, uh, with their game duties, so they are now strictly um, concentrating on the production and gaming stuff, while people managers are taking care of the people and all the issues connected with their recruitment, onboarding, development, satisfaction, and any of these soft areas. So how is it working? Uh, we impl implemented this change around six months ago, so it's still the phase of change for us. But what can be observed at the moment is that producers are basically happy with it because they don't have to take care of that kind of stuff anymore. And they are just simply not their problems, which means they just have uh, much less to do. Uh, at the same time, the issues that people were raising about, about their um, their issues that they were raising to producers usually had a smaller priority for them, so it took forever uh, to be handled. Right now, people managers are able to handle it more smoothly uh, and maybe even immediately, so people are more happy with that fact. Uh, at the same time, what is really important about the role of producers and people manager is that they are working tightly uh, and actually feedbacking each other uh, day to day. So the producer is giving to people manager feedback about their people. How are they doing in the project? What is expected from them? Uh, are they doing their stuff in a timely manner? So all this more hard stuff. And at the same time, the people manager is gathering from the people feedback about the producer and is giving it back to him or her. So. Um, they can adjust their, um, the way they work with people or just simply uh, how, they, how they act. An additional thing that is worthy to mention is that people are just happy with this change, most of people. Uh, so they praise their people managers and they say that finally they feel important for someone and that someone cares for them. So this is the stuff that we really wanted to, to achieve. Obviously, it's not so perfect right now. So we have some issues regarding the fact, for example, that people still don't know who really is their boss. So they feel they have two bosses. They don't know exactly which issues should be raised to which person, because actually there is lots of stuff that, is, uh, that responsibilities are shared between people producer and uh, people manager and the producer. Uh, so it's not obviously the perfect solution yet, uh, but we're working on it. And we believe that the fact that people are happy with this change should be, uh, should be the priority. And then we will work on the more um, on the details of, of this solution. Mm, obviously, this kind of uh, idea might not be applicable to any com every company uh, due to its size or due to its culture or anything. But what could be the takeaway from this part of the presentation is the fact that whoever manages people in your company should have the space to do so. So managing people is not something you can add to their duties and say, oh, just manage those 10 or... or sorry. Or... 30 people, it takes no time, just you should take them. 
So it takes time and you need space to do so, and this is worthy uh, remembering while you're creating lead or manager's position in your company. Besides this solution, which was coming more from the top of the organization at Techland, we also created a set of tools for our managers. And what is worthy to remember that managers created those on their own. This is not something that HR created and gave them. This is something they created and they shared. Uh, we were more helping them on the way. And this set of tools helped them to organize reality or just help them to remember about even basic stuff to avoid the kind of situation I've mentioned before. So now Carolina is going to talk, you, talk us through those tools we implemented. Thank you. Okay, so to start with, after all analysis mentioned by Matilda, we have distinguished three main areas of actions connected with our onboarding. So the first one are tools used by our managers or, or team leaders before the new employee will come. The second is wow effect actions. And the third one is one-on-one -on -one feedback communication culture. OK, so let's talk more about the first point. So to make our life easier, we created some tools which were simple to prepare and they were costless. We have prepared them once and we are using them constantly. Of course, you may think that they are pain in the ass, and surely they are. But the point is that they are working. They are not rocket science, absolutely. But as you heard from Matilda's stories, we used to forget about even basic stuff sometimes. So firstly, we have IT forms. It's just a Google document which asks us about IT equipment which we need. So for example, we are entering information about the graphic card, um, telephone, needed accesses. Um, for example, before the concept artists come to our company, we are asking about the preferred hardware so they can choose the tablet of their choice. And after that, it's sending to IT guys and administration. So that's the IT forms. Next, managers checklists. So this document reminds us reminds actually our managers or team leaders what they should do, what they should remember before the new employee will come. So, assignation body. So, helpful senior person from the team who will be usually the first contact point for the newcomer. Filling IT forms. Because just to make sure that they have their own desk and computer to work, not like before. Um, Scheduling start date in their calendar, preparing team building events for the whole probation period, uh, gathering necessary documents with substantive goal for the whole probation period, and telling to the team about the newcomer. We are mentioning the responsibilities, duties, start date, position, few more words optionally about the experience. So that's the manager's checklist. Next thing, email. Simple, universal template. Uh, our managers and team leaders find it's really useful. We gathered here, uh, here all necessary information like telephone numbers, um, IT contact when Wi-Fi is down, body's contact where he or she doesn't know where to poop. Believe me, real work-life situation. Um, administration contact when he or she needs extra plan on his or her desk when he needs extra whiteboard, or just to remove that guy who is sitting next to your desk. Again, those examples are real ones that has been sent to our administration. So I know that those sounds like pure HR ideas, but the truth is that they have been created and invented by our managers and team leaders on their own. So next point is wow effect. What does it mean? So we wanted that the new person during the first date felt really awesome and flattered. That after the day, he or she may say, oh my god, it was really super California stitches, ex Pialidocious day. Every day could be my first day at Techland. So how to achieve that? We have welcome back. So this is just back, of course, lash, bidden, and skip us. 
those gadgets are a kind of must-have for new employee because all of us has them. Next thing, handbook. First day is usually very hard for the new employee. Many faces to memorize, a lot of stuff to remember, formalities and documents to sign. We understand that totally. That's why we have created handbook, where in one place we have collected all necessary information about the company. A little bit about the history, our previous projects, games, benefits, office lives. It's also useful when we forget also to tell something uh, to the newcomer about, for example, development budget. So on the slide you can see the sample first pages. To see more, of course, you should join Techland. And cream de la cream, lunch. Believe me or not, but during the Dying Light project, people didn't know each other, even working in the same team. We tried this really ridiculous procedure to introduce everyone to every team, to every person, but it was really, really creepy. It was like, hello everyone, this is Mike, Mike is a junior programmer, say hello to Mike. And nobody wanted to say something, and it was just like, blah. So people even started to making memes about this kind of situation. So we res resigned for that. And instead of that, we proposed something really wow. So during the first day, we are inviting our newcomer to eat lunch with the whole team in our canteen. And we noticed immediately that it's just a great occasion to get each other better, talk, and those of us who miss this, they are just losers. Next point, the last but not the least, it's special t-shirt, part of the team. This is kind of souvenir for those of us who survive probation period at Techland, and after that, they can wear it proudly. Just remember to wash it from time to time. Again, real work life situation. So now I want to share you information about our feedback culture. So communication during the Dying Light project was one of the weakest points. When someone said feedback, it means usually that he or she fucked something up. We decided to change that. Currently, we have much more information meetings. For example, at the beginning of this year, our CEO shared information about the financial situation of the company, uh, plans for the future, next steps, etc. Also, we have open demos of our Wrocław project. Actually, we have one week ago a fourth uh, demo project uh, of our Wrocław team. And 100 people attended, despite it was really beautiful Friday afternoon. So, one-on-one -on -one communication and one-on-one -on -one meetings are essential part of this change. So we believe also that uh, none of good onboarding process can succeed without regular meetings with the new employee, at least on the first day, in the middle of probation period, and two weeks before it ends. Why? It's simple. Newcomers need to know what our responsibilities and tasks addressed to them are. Good practice is in Techland also to write down all bullet points that should be achieved during the probation period. Our managers admit that it's important to choose technical and measurable aspects because only then they can easily evaluate the progress of the new person. So on the slide you can see the bad examples from the Dying Light project and the current ones from last month. Next point is manager's cheat sheet, really useful at this topic. So Generally, we can say that, of course, it's manager's de decision what they are discussing during their meetings, but just to avoid situation like, hello, Mike, do you have some questions? Everything is fine? Yeah, okay, so that's it. So to have, to, to have any ideas uh, gathered, we have prepared manager's cheat sheet. So we have their points like, welcome new person warmly, ask how he or she is doing, Describe the project, the team, who is who, tell about responsibilities, task addressed to them. Uh, you can go through your expectations regarding technical and soft skills. Um, encourage to ask questions. Agree the way you will communicate if you want to choose hangout, email, uh, telephone, or just face-to-face -face meeting. 
And our managers or team leaders are, are, tell, are telling also about the working culture, stand-ups, science hours. Silence hours, for example, is a special practice at Techland that um, twice a week in specific hours um, we, are, mm, we are just focusing on our creative and, the, and individual work and it helps us to organize our time better. So that's the manager's chat cheat sheet. Also, it, this is the idea for the first meeting on the first day, but we have also the next ones for the, for the next meetings as well. So, to be honest with you, new practices at Techland are working since the beginning of this year. So, long-term effects will be visible in longer period of time. But what we're seeing currently is fifth month without any fuck-up in a row, really. So, that's the first important e point. What's next? We can observe that our managers or team leaders, they are just relaxed when the new person is coming. They are better organized. Lesson for Techland was that less is more. It's better organize your reality in small parts than fixing everything at once. So if you, as a manager or team leader, feel that your onboarding is a mess, maybe you can start with some of our ideas or tools that we have presented. Thank you very much. Thank you.